What's going on, y'all? It's S. Join me to discover the stories behind recording studios that are also behind some of the greatest hits that we all know and love, right here on Studio Stories. Let's go ahead and check it out. Presented by The Spot. Welcome to Atlanta, the city too busy to hate. Home to Martin Luther King Jr. and an important city in the civil rights movement, Atlanta has been a cultural and musical hub of creativity for the music industry. And in this episode, we find ourselves at the legendary Patchwork Recording Studios with Curtis Daniel III. Located in West Midtown, Atlanta, it was established in 1993 by former Atlanta Falcon offensive tackle Bob Whitfield and is currently owned and operated by Curtis Daniel III and Mike Wilson. The facility features two isolated recording studios, Studio 995 and Studio 9000 along with Studio 1019, a vocal tracking and editing studio in the 9000 wing of the building itself. Aside from recording, the premises are used for audio mastering in the mastering studio, a production studio for beat makers, as well as offering services for distribution and paperwork, video and photography, and graphic design services. The original owner was named Bob Whitfield. And Bob and I grew up together in Carson, California, in a neighborhood called The Patch, The Cabbage Patch. We had another homeboy named Raz Kaz, that's a rapper that grew up in The Patch. We didn't meet Raz until junior high. Bob and I played football. We both got scholarships. He went to Stanford, I went to Michigan State. Um, Raz stayed at home and was doing music. When Bob got drafted by the Falcons, and I had found out that he was kind of dabbling around with music and had bought some equipment and put in his basement. Mm. But then I found out the other homie, Raz, was rapping and I thought he was really talented. And I was like, Bob, you should send him the equipment and let him make some music. So we started a record label called, uh, the studio is Patchwork Recording Studio, then the record label is called Patchwork Recordings. So we started a record label and we put the project out ourselves. It created a national bidding war from every major label you can think of. Starting off as a record label, Patchwork Recordings' first signing was Raz Kaz, whose first single, Remain Anonymous, secured him a licensing deal with Priority Records. In 1993, this gave Whitfield the momentum to build Patchwork Recording Studios in Atlanta, which was fully established in summer of 1995. Back then, you were spending about $200,000, $250,000 on production and studio time. So we did the first album and then Shit, man, we spent all this money at the studio. We should start our own studio. Right, and yeah. so because Bob was playing for the Falcons, we ended up, he ended up buying the studio here in 93 and it kind of laid dormant. It wasn't really open doing business until I got here in the summer of 95. And that's when we started working. And um, our first client was Outkast and we just kind of hit the, hit the ground running from there on. With credits from artists such as Outkast, Gucci Mane, 2 Chainz, Future, Young Thug, and even Jay-Z and Beyonce, Patchwork has been a staple in the Atlanta scene for over 25 years. With the constant changes that have taken place in the music industry in the last 20 years that were deemed challenging the most recording studios, Patchwork has remained as a world-class facility. You think of Atlanta hip-hop, who do you think of? And at the time, you thought about organized noise and Outkast. And uh, we had found out that they were big Falcon fans. And so we, um, we we did what people are doing now, but we didn't have a title for it. Now people buy box seats and suites and take their clients to the game and kind of yeah. broker deals and stuff. We was 19 and we was hustling. So we was like, Bob play for the Falcons. They want to go to the game, man, give them a jersey <laughs> and bring them to the game and all this stuff. So we, we, you know, we offered them tickets to the game and Probably had over 20 people come from Outkast, Goody Mob, Society of Soul, Organized Noise, and then we were so close to the stadium that a lot of them parked at the studio to go to the game and carpool. And then after the game, we came back to the studio and they did their first session. So that's how that's what gave us our instant credibility because that Elevators album and Equimini, it sold millions right, yeah. of copies and it was physical CDs and albums and you know, Didi, who was the kind of managing organized noise, they made sure we got all our credit. And okay. so literally when people was like, who are these outcast people? Who's this dude in the alien suit? Who's this? And they looked at it and they looked to see where they did all of their work and said patchwork and it, it gave us instant credibility. With an abundant amount of recording studios that exist today, 
How will others be able to maneuver in this ever-changing industry for the long haul? Although the music industry looms constant uncertainty, it's the facilities that still stand when the dust clears that takes the crown every time. Comment below and let me know what y'all think the future of recording studios will look like in the upcoming years. Alright y'all, and that wraps up the very first episode of Studio Stories here at Patchwork Recording Studios. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Also, be sure to check out the link. You know what I'm saying? Patchwork Recording Studios has a documentary, a seven-part documentary. Hit the link in the description box. Check that out. It's the spot. You know what I'm saying? Studio Stories. Next episode. Let's go.